All right, welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos. I'm still in my backyard. It's been a beautiful night. July 9th, 2025. Uh, I promised you a few videos ago that I have some materials on Element 115. And so I'm going to share just a couple of ideas on Element 115. I mean, I promised I would deliver and now I'm going to deliver. Some of you may be familiar with some of these sources. Some of you may not. Uh, it is still controversial. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not ending the discussion. <laughs> I'm more or less entering it. But there's something to be said here that is very interesting. It would help if you have a chemistry background. I don't, although I have studied a little bit of chemistry. Not a whole lot, though. I must confess, I don't need to to share with you what I'm going to share tonight. Let's go to the share of the screen. Now, in my research, let me double check, make sure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that'll work. Bob Lazar, Element 115, Massive Stars and Heavy Metals. Michael E. Sala. Uh, I like this guy. I, I do. He he is good. He's a PhD. Some recent scientific advances that vindicate some of the information Bob Lazar provided from his alleged experiences at S4. His initial claim was in 1989. A stable element 115 was his claim. And the existence of such an element was initially dismissed by some of his critics, became a factor in Lazar not being taken seriously. Stanton Friedman, 1997, said, there is no evidence whatsoever that any 115 has been created anywhere. Based on what we know about all the other elements over 100, it would certainly have been radioactive with the short half-life. 500 pounds could not have been accumulated. So his scheme sounds good, but it makes no real sense, especially in view of how difficult it would be to add protons to element 115. Now, that was in uh, 1997. Whenever you make a solid statement of scientific fact, be careful. Because 2004... Scientists announced that they were able to reproduce an isotope of 115 in the laboratory and said that a stable isotope is possible. That would be Dr. Joshua Patton, one of the creators of the 115 isotope. Linda Moulton Howe confirmed it with sufficient technological advances. The creation of a stable form of 115 is possible. Could it be solid, though, and can it be held in the hand? Dr. Patton says, someday down the road, I think so. If it's true, we find something that is long enough lived. To hold something in your hand, you would need a significant quantity of the atoms. So we've produced four atoms of element 115 in a month. It would take, you don't have enough time in the rest of the universe to create enough for you to hold in your hand, however by the same kinds of production methods that they were using back in 2004, remember? So it is a future technology. It might be possible, however, because now we do have element 115. Now, interestingly, Lazar said that it formed in massive stars. And because of that... <clears throat> This led to more criticism by astronomers than physicists that he was incorrect because stars could not produce heavy metals with atomic number greater than iron, 26, in stable star. Whoops, in stable stars. That was an important criticism. David Morgan gave it in 1996. Lazar seems to suggest that his element 115, the alien fuel source, 
which does not exist on Earth, should be present in those solar systems that were more massive in their inception. So the implication here is that a star system, which condensed out of a more massive primordial cloud, this should have a greater abundance of heavier elements. This, however, is incorrect, he said. The heavier elements, heavier than iron, are not formed during the normal life cycles of stars. That was an important point. Not that we understood back then. The only time when the nuclei are cooked is during the collapse and subsequent explosion of supernova. So that explosion spreads heavy elements throughout the galaxy. That's why some of them are more abundant than others, though all the star systems in a particular region of the galaxy will have essentially the same abundances of heavy elements. So if element 115 is stable, then it should be created in supernova explosions and it should exist everywhere. That was the claim. That was the criticism. However, there has been recent breakthroughs in understanding <clears throat> the formation of heavy metal in stars. For instance, <clears throat> heavy metals with a higher atomic number than iron, which is 26, can and are found in stars in their normal cycle rather than just through supernova. That was the old understanding. So again, the more we learn, the more we have to be careful about dogmatism. So this new theory answers the concern of the existence of heavy metals with high atomic metals forming in massive stars. He says, it does not, after all, require a supernova to create elements heavier than iron. Heavy elements can also form in the cores of massive stars before they go supernova. So this new theory has recently been confirmed again with the recent discovery of three massive stars that have led. And that's the atomic number 82. So this is huge. The theory has now been supported by data from the three binary or double stars. And each star, which is likewise light in metal, contains an amount of lead weighing the same as the moon. In other words, that's a lot of lead. So this process is called the slow fusion or S process. The high abundance of lead in these otherwise low met metallicity stars also provides detailed clues on how the S process operates inside the AGB stars. And then they describe that process. It is the surplus of neutrons that become the building blocks for making heavier elements through the S process. Now, half of all the metals heavier than iron are caused by supernova explosions. Of course, these are rapidly formed through nuclear fusion, the R process, and the other half in stable stars with low metallic density is a slow buildup of heavy elements in a more gentle fusion process. So. This new understanding of the formation of heavy metals in stars and the discovery of large quantities of lead in some stars negates the criticism against Lazar from Morgan. And it shows, and this is important, that Lazar's idea that some massive stars in the normal stellar cycle, they may have element 115 after all and they are developed in them is a very real possibility. So this is quite interesting. If element 115 
is naturally formed in the core of some massive stars, and element 115 is used in the propulsion system of extraterrestrial races, then it would be fair to assume that some extraterrestrials may have discovered how to mine stars of their heavy elements to use as a propulsion fuel. Now, what makes that so interesting, too, is we understand now our Earth is 4.5, 4.3 billion years old, right? The universe itself is around 13 and a half billion. Well, that's 9 billion extra years. If hypothetically, and I agree, I'm complete speculation here. If a civilization had an extra 5 billion instead of using the full 9 billion, if it took another 4 billion years for a good, solid, uh, smart civilization to arise, and it had an extra 5 billion years of time ahead of us, what could they accomplish in that length of time? 5 billion years longer than our entire Earth has formed and survived. So this gets really interesting. Got just a couple more ideas I want to share. If they had sufficient knowledge in mining suns of element 115, and other elements may be using this as part of an interstellar trade. See, there nothing says that couldn't be happening. Such knowledge and possession of large quantities of 115 and other elements may lead to interstellar conflicts over certain star systems. Indeed, the sun's, the Earth's sun or nearby stars may have heavy elements that may attract extraterrestrial races who are seeking to mine these precious natural resources. So here's the thing. We are slowly moving to an understanding of how certain star systems might be highly prized by extraterrestrial races that seek to gain control and mine stars of heavy elements, such as element 115. So we have new advances in physics. We have new advances in astronomy. And Bob's Lazar information seems more ahead of its time than just simply lunacy run amok. If it was widely dismissed in the early 1990s, now it could have more relevance than ever before because it's been made. Now, I agree. Very, very, very minute quantities, but we've now made element 115. It is real. And they believe they can make a stable element 115. So, again, here's the key with science. Uh, someone makes a wild claim. Yeah, I get Carl Sagan, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. We're never going to be able to outrun that because that seems to be a justifiable basis of making a judgment call. You're not required. You don't have to morally accept everything that's ever been claimed in any field. Psychology, religion, history, philosophy, science, whatever. No, we test the claims. The key is don't be dogmatic, however, in claims any more than you can be dogmatic in dismissing the claims with an evidence base that you have because we're not done learning. We're continuing to build our knowledge. We're continuing to improve our technology, which allows us to perform experiments that we haven't been able to do even just one year ago, let alone 90, right? 50, however far back. So an open-mindedness to keep exploring, to keep testing, to keep learning, and to keep experimenting, that is what makes our country so great, is this scientific spirit of ever learning and expanding our abilities to process that knowledge, to improve our lives, that is why science is so vital.
And that is why rather than just dismissing something because it sounds so out of the ordinary is the height of silliness. And Bob Lazar is still in this game. And that's just fascinating to me. It just is. I can't help it. So there's my exposition briefly. Well, Sala's exposition of element 115. I do have a lot more materials about element 115 that makes this such an exquisitely interesting thing because Bob Lazar didn't give us something just everyday ordinary. He gave us something startlingly original and unique and that on its surface seemed so contradictory, so problematic, so difficult that we just lambasted him. And now 20 years down the road, hey, we've got that element. Fun stuff. I'll keep in touch as I keep finding more materials for you. Thanks for your support. Hit the like and subscribe. Share this video with everybody you can think of if you want to. I appreciate that. And I will catch up to you as I find more.